Welcome back to your 10. This is lesson 3 of double signs physics generating electricity. In lesson 3 we're going to learn about this concept of efficiency. So if you could just start by at the top of page 13 writing down lesson 3. The title is already there for you. Efficiency underlined and today's date. Now efficiency is a concept where we look at the amount of energy that's transferred to useful energy from the energy that's put into a system or, or, or device. And where does this fit into what we've learned previously? Well we've learned that how we can produce electricity in coal fire power stations nuclear power stations and we're going to see how we can compare different ways of generating electricity by using this concept of efficiency. In the spec the statement is statement B and will be complete in pages 13 to 20 and the statement talks about how you need to learn how to use something called Sankey diagrams to show energy transfers and you'll be using this equation here percentage efficiency as we go through today's lesson now you would have learnt in key stage three about efficiency so it's not a brand new topic or concept for you but we certainly need to review it and perhaps relearn it again in the context of electricity so let's just start off this is um, a little task for you to do an appliance transfers energy or power because you can work with the efficiency for energy or for power only some of the transferred energy is usefully usefully used that's the key word the rest is wasted so we need to know how much is useful, how much is wasted. Take an electric light bulb. What is the useful energy out of a bulb? Now I want you to answer questions one, which is what's the useful energy out of the bulb? Two, what type of energy is supplied to make it work? And three, what type of energy is wasted in this example and as much as you can I'd like you then to write in here the amount of energy that's turned into light energy and here what type of energy is transferred to 140 joules and answer one two and three so this is a quick of your self-assessment task so press pause now and press play when completed okay now We'll go through each of these in turn. What you should know is that for a light bulb, and that's the key word light, that the useful energy is light energy. So this here is the useful energy because this here is 
wasted energy. And this type of energy here is heat energy. When you switch a light bulb on, as well as producing light energy, you produce heat energy, but you don't you don't go home and think, ooh, I want to heat up this living room, so I'm gonna put the light on. You'd put the central heating on, or uh, if you had a fire, electric fire in the room, you, you would do that, or gas fire. You put the light bulb on to get light out, but in this example, this is an inefficient light bulb. It's the old type of light bulb, what we call the filament light bulb, and it's not a, an LED. There's the filament, basically a thin piece of wire. I think we've learned about that before. Whereas if you compare it to an LED, a light em emitting diode, which we have learned about, it's fairly inefficient. So this, uh, this is the energy supplied, the 200 joules. I'll just highlight a few things. Energy cannot be... Um, destroyed or created it is transferred from one form to another so you've got energy supply going in and it's being transferred into 60 joules of light energy and 140 joules of heat energy being wasted looking now at question one what is the useful energy out of a bulb that is light energy so I'm just going to write that here. What type of energy is supplied to make it work? Well, that's electrical, electrical energy. What type of energy is wasted? That's heat energy. Can you now compare your answers to the answers there? And if you've got them right, give them a tick. If you haven't, simply correct them. Press pause, do that. When completed, press play. Next, we're gonna learn how we can represent that flow of energy using what we call a Sankey diagram. Again, you would have met this at Key Stage 3. Complete the one below. So, kindly, Mr. Ruddy has represented the different ratios of energy change for you but you need to label this Sankey diagram based upon the energy supplied the useful energy and the wasted energy but before you do that we're gonna watch a quick video to recap on how to draw a Sankey diagram Hello everyone, in this short video I'm going to be going through the five steps to drawing the perfect Sankey diagram. Before we go through what those five steps are, let's just have a quick look at a Sankey diagram just to learn what one is. Sankey diagram has three main components, first one being the input energy. That's this bit over here that tells you how much energy is being put into the energy transfer. Second part is the wasted energy output. There the arrow is going pointing downwards on our Sankey diagram and thirdly is the useful energy outputs which are the arrows pointing to the right on our Sankey diagram. So let's have a go at drawing the Sankey diagram for this kettle. A kettle transfers 800 joules of electrical energy. 600 joules of thermal energy is used to heat the water. 200 joules of thermal energy is wasted to heat the, to the surroundings. Draw the Sankey diagram 
to represent this energy transfer. Now, step one of drawing your Sankey diagram is you've got to decide on what your scales are going to be. So, I've got 800 joules of electrical energy as my input energy here. So, I'm going to use one square to represent 100 joules. So, one square equals 100 joules. So that's the scale that I'm going to use throughout this Sankey diagram. Secondly, I'm going to plot the input energy. Now the input energy I've circled and it's 800 joules. Now remember our input energy has to be on the left hand side of our Sankey diagram. And I've got 800 joules. Each square is 100 joules. So the end part of my uh, Sankey diagram arrow needs to have 8 squares. So let's count them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six, seven, eight. So the start of my Sankey diagram needs to look something like that, where we've got eight squares. Tick off that bit, because we've just done that bit. Next off, we're going to plot the wasted energy. So the wasted energy here is 200 joules. And it's often easier to plot the wasted energy first. And remember that wasted energy, it needs to point downwards and it needs to be represent 200 joules, which on our, on our scale would be two squares. So let's count across one, two squares there. So this would be part of our Sankey diagram there. Turn it into an arrow. So we've plotted the wasted uh, energy outputs now. Next up, what we need to do is we need to plot the useful energy outputs. And before I do that, I'm going to extend the line at the top. And then the end of the line is where my arrow is going to start. And our useful energy output is 600 joules, which is going to be six squares on our scale. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So the bottom of our arrow needs to be there then we can draw our arrow last thing that we need to do is uh, just the last finishing touches and draw that line up to there and that line up to there so we've plotted our useful uh, output energies final thing that we need to do is we need to add some labels to it and there we have it there are labels so let's have a quick summary the five steps to drawing the perfect Sankey diagram. First of all, decide on your scales. Secondly, plot the input energy. Thirdly, plot the wasted output energy. Then plot the useful output energy. And finally, add the labels. I hope you found this video useful. And don't forget to leave a comment to tell me what you think. Now you've seen our video. This is for you to complete. I will help by starting one part of the diagram. So what I'll do, I'll take this section here, the wasted energy, and show how you would complete that on this Sankey diagram. So I'm just transferring the same information. The wasted energy, which is this here, is heat energy and it's got a total amount of 140 joules press pause complete the Sankey diagram for the input energy and for the useful energy when you've done so press play So what you should have done is, again, use that information there to write in energy supplied. And we could as well write in the, the form of energy, which is electrical. So we've got heat energy that's wasted. This is 
electrical energy supply to the light bulb and that's 200 joules electrical i'll put that in brackets and then the useful output energy is light energy light energy <clears throat> and that's 60 joules now what what you'll find is that the useful energy and wasted energy added together at 60 and 140 add up to the energy supplied so that's 60 and 140 add up to 200. So all, always remember that. So that's 60 plus 140 equals your 200 joules. Moving on, page 14. The efficiency of an appliance is a measure of how well it converts the energy it takes in into in into useful energy out below is the equation so yeah just pause on that for a second in in our thinking the higher the efficiency the better the device is no device is 100 percent efficient one of the most efficient devices is a is a push bike it's about 90 percent efficient very little wasted energy so what is asking you to do here is to use the equation i'm going to do this with you because you're going to be answering these questions below in a moment so let's look at this this is the equation you'll be given it's in the front of your booklet you'll be given it in an exam but before we answer the question let's just make sure we understand these terms it says the energy usefully transferred for so for our our light bulb the usefully transferred energy was the 60 joules so over here i'll put on top of the equation the 60 and then the total energy supplied that's what goes into the light bulb that was your 200 joules now the most common error is that people put in here the wasted energy it's not the wasted energy it's the energy supplied and then you multiply that by a hundred percent So you just put in if you're doing this on your calculator or oh, in fact i'll do it on the calculator to show you okay here's a calculator so i'm doing 60 divided by 200 that's giving me 0.3 and then i multiply that 0.3 by 100 and that's 30 percent so i'll just move the calculator out the way and i will write down then <coughs> the answer is 30 percent let's just check our numbers are correct yeah we got the 60 joules and the 200 joules answer 30. then it's asking conclusion for the efficiency of the light bulb So you just write down here what is it, what does this mean 30 percent of the electrical energy supplied is converted 
into useful light energy seventy percent of the electrical spelling error electrical energy supplied is converted into wasted heat energy. Just highlight, we've got the energy supplied, we've got the useful, and we've got the wasted. Can you say, next question, what can you say about the energy in and the energy flowing out of the light bulb? I touched upon this a few moments ago, just showing you this here. And <coughs> you can see that this is the, oh, I use a different pen. This is the energy in and this is the energy out. So. The energy going into the light bulb is the energy equals the energy coming out. What you put in is what you get out. And the, the reason behind that is it's uh, one of the laws, basic laws of physics. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It's transferred from one form into another. So I'll just write that then and underneath energy in equals energy out. And that's your 200 joules equals, so we're adding now the useful and the wasted together. The useful is the 60, the wasted is the 140. So they equal each other. If a device is very efficient, it means that only a small percentage of the energy is wasted. So the example I give there was the bicycle. And you can look at the front of washing machines and appliances now, and they, they're graded just as uh, pupils are graded for the GCSEs. And uh, machines are graded for how efficient they are. Okay. Over to you now. Questions on calculating efficiencies. If we look at question one, in the second, you got two, three, four, you need to do. I will give you a starter here for question one. So the battery in a mobile phone can hold, remember, good practice, just underline the important information, which almost always in physics questions are the numbers and units. So a bat the battery in a mobile phone holds that much chemical energy. It converts 16,000 of the 18,000 into electrical energy. So that's our useful, so useful electrical energy. Whereas 2,000 joules is wasted. What's the efficiency of the battery. Well, as always, we follow the E law equation number answer units. So, firstly, you'll write down the equation, like this equation here, which you've got in the front of your booklets. Just gone ahead there and wrote down the equation 
useful energy that's the 16,000 energy supplied is the 18,000 and we multiply that then by 100 Again, you need your calculator. 16,000 over 18,000 is the same as 16 over, eight, over 18. <coughs> so I'm just going to put those numbers in here. 16 over 18. And then to convert it into percentage, multiply by 100. To the nearest percentage, well, that's 89%. 89%. And obviously, the more efficient your phone, the longer it's going to hold its charge before it needs recharging. Your job now then <coughs> is to do question two. Question three. And question four now question four is asking you to draw a sanky diagram just get your ruler and work out your own scale because it's saying the computer is 25 percent efficient if i just if you look at my ruler here I'll zo zoom in a little no, i can't zoom the ruler in so I would that'll be one, two, three, four centimeters there. Now, based on the size of your booklet, you might want to do eight centimeters or four centimeters. But the reason I chose that is because twenty-five percent efficient is a quarter. So if you've got four centimeters there and you move this over then the thickness of your arrow for the useful energy is going to go is going to have that width there so there's your arrow coming out across that width if you're struggling with that go back and look at that the early part of this video that shows you how to draw the Sankey diagram. The pen I've used there perhaps is, is a little bit too thick. So you draw the, the arrow of that thickness. Again, I should be using a ruler here. So if I got rid of that, that purple mark there. And similarly here for for the energy supply. So you use a scale that's going to work for you in your booklet. I've just tidied that up a little bit, and I've given you a starter there for ten, just to give you a, an idea of, of of what you need to do. Questions two, two, three, and four are teacher test. So I'm not going to give you the answers in this video. That's for you to do yourselves. So press pause, complete questions two, three and four, please. On page 16, we're looking at how we calculate the efficiency of appliances and the appliance in this case is a winch. A winch is something used to pick something up off the floor. In this case we've got a mass and the motor turns around you can see here it's got a piece of string 
coming down from the motor and then it lifts the mass up off the floor very straightforward now to calculate the efficiency there's a few things that we need to know we need to know the amount of energy supplied and, and the amount of useful energy so if we look at um, what it says underneath it says the winch lifts the mass up a distance of one meter and has therefore increased its stored potential gravitational energy so it's it's given it more potential energy since the job of the winch was to lift the mass we can say that this is the useful energy now you would do this in class i'm going to use some data in order to help us calculate the efficiency of the winch so useful energy out is potential energy the weight of the mass is four newtons so what we would do here and if you're doing this in class you'd be putting in your own data four newtons is the weight four times one is four joules the reading on the joule meter is the amount of energy supplied to the winch if you notice is a lot greater than the useful energy out that you have calculated in, in the previous part okay so i either give you now the joule meter reading so that you can complete the sanki diagram underneath Forty joules is the joule meter reading. That's that's off this here. That's the that's measuring the amount of energy going into the winch. So what you need to do now is draw a Sankey diagram for the for the winch. As it says here use one arrow for the wasted heat and sound energy so what you're going to have a very rough sketch again you're going to have this type of thing an arrow coming out over there and an arrow coming down here for the wasted and this arrow here is going to represent the useful energy and that that's the four joules and you've got the 40 joules is the energy supplied so you now should be able to work out the wasted energy this is not drawn to scale use this graph paper here to draw to scale This is going to be a, um, a self assessed piece of work. So you do your best now <coughs> on completing the Sankey diagram and calculate the, the efficiency underneath using the equation. So pause the video now and press play when you've completed the Sankey diagram and the calculation of the efficiency. I've made a start on the Sankey diagram here and the scale that's used is that one large square is 10 joules and one small square is one joule. So you can see if I just use a highlighter if I start here at the top, there'll be 0, 10, 20, 30, 40. And if I were to zoom in here, you can see there's four small squares representing the useful energy out. That leaves 36 joules of wasted energy. In order to represent that then, we've got 10, I've got little, little dots, 10, 20 30 and then six small squares takes us to 
here or across there. All that's needed to do then is to go using the ruler for presentation an arrow coming down for the wasted energy. So can you compare yours to to that? And one important point is that yours might be slightly different but still correct. For example, this arrow here that I just drawn in for wasted energy, it might be further that way or that way. It doesn't matter as long as you've got the right widths for the wasted and the useful energy. If you need to correct that, do so now. And then the final part I've written underneath, which is calculate the efficiency of the winch. Same as before, write down the equation, put in the numbers, write down the answer uh, and the units. Scrolling down then, these two equations we've already met and you're going to use them to answer these questions. I'll help you at the start of question one and talk through a few others and then it's over to you. So the first question, low energy light bulbs are very efficient, much more efficient than older tungsten filament bulbs of the same light output which wastes a lot of electrical energy as seen to calculate the efficiency of the following bulbs. So it's a comparison you'd expect to have the answer. So answer A there and B there. Again, you'd write down the equation. You'd expect A, this low energy, to be more efficient. But you need to work out that efficiency underneath. Question two, it gives you, so again, highlight the important part. That's the output of electrical power, which is the useful energy from maximum wind power. So that is the energy supplied. So you can work out the, the efficiency and also the wasted power. Question three, past GCSE exam question, which is testing your understanding of Sankey diagrams and efficiency. And the fourth question is a longer question. Notice that part C is for higher tier pupils only, as is question five. So, can you now complete the remaining questions? Teacher assess part of the booklet. Off you go. See you next time. Bye.